Let me start my timer here. 30 minutes is the goal. I do not want to go that much uh, above that. I want to actually go under. So there's a lot of material to cover. So today's message is titled, There is Something Missing. And I have been thinking about this message, stewing on it all week. You know, sometimes when I prepare messages, usually I I have a good idea of where I want to go and things just kind of unfold. This week, I could not for the life of me figure out where I wanted to go, what was going on. It doesn't matter how much I'd read and study. I just couldn't get anything to come to my mind. (laughs) So what I ended up doing was I started jotting down all of these things and all these thoughts and all these points that we're going to hit today, and hopefully I will be able to make some sense of it, all right? So there's something missing. You're going to hear that phrase 20, 30 times today probably, and there's a reason why. I want to talk about what it is that's missing, that awakeness, woke is a word that you'll hear nowadays. I want to finish the sentence, walk by blank. I want to talk about... Everybody needs a blank, and we're going to talk about all of this stuff. And then the last point will be full proof. What does that mean? So the first thing I want to talk about is this thing that's missing. And as I was dwelling on this, I, I've been hearing so much lately over, I'd say, the course of the past five years. I'm talking with people. We're talking about spiritual things. They're sharing parts of their walk. And I can recall, even in my first eight years of going in and out of every single denomination being, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, maybe you might relate with this, but do you ever recall sitting in a congregation, you're going through the motions, you're singing the songs, you're hearing the message, and then you walk out and you're just like, there's something missing. There's something missing. Maybe you're out to lunch with friends or you're out and dinner, you're grabbing coffee and you're talking about spiritual things and you're talking about things that are going on within your church and you're like, you know what? There's something missing. I feel like we're missing something. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm tired of milk. I'm starving. I want some meat. I want something to chew on, you know? Or... Um, you're stewing out, going on through your week, and maybe you heard a message, and the message was, you're saved by grace, and uh, but, but, you, you got to do this, and if we don't do this, well, then we're going to be separated from the sheep as the goats, according to Matthew. You know, there's this something missing. It's almost like if you're looking at, at a, a, a pie, right? You're looking at a big piece of pie. And there's just this tiny little thing, and you, you just can't quite figure it out. You, you're not sure what it is. You just know there's something missing. Well, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about what that something is that's missing. We're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Many folks here, many of those tuning in online, you probably know this scripture by heart. If this is your first time hearing this, well, this is something that would be new to you. This might be something that might be missing in your life and in your walk or potentially in your experience of what you've been taught in your spiritual upbringing. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself... Approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I remember the first time I heard this passage or this Bible verse ever introduced to me. The person that introduced that Bible verse to me is sitting in the back of this room. It's my wife, Lauren. It wasn't my wife at the time. She was the first person to point that passage of Scripture out to me. And I remember, I recall the first time looking at it, I just kind of sat there puzzled, just kind of looking at it and thinking, man, why hasn't someone shown me this? There's something missing. It's not equating. 
And I remember, it's funny, actually, this week, I was going through my emails, and I found uh, the first email exchange that Lauren and I had is after five days of us meeting. And she was uh, sharing things. She was excited about the Word of God. She was passionate about the Word of God. And I, I told her, like, look, that's amazing. I love that. Like, I don't think you understand how much I love the Word of God. And uh, she... She was so relieved. I think she told me it was at 3 a.m. She, she read that email, and the very next email, she unloaded everything. It was like it was like Second Timothy 2:15, Paul's our apostle, the Gentile, and it just kind of like fire hosed, <laughs> you know. And I, it's funny because I read my response where I was kind of resistant at first because there was so much information. Because all my walk up until that point, there was something missing. I didn't know what that thing was. Little did I know, eight years later, post that email, I read that, and all of that thing made perfect, absolute sense. There was no confusion about it. There was no contradictions. But at first, I was resistant to it because up until that point, everything that I'd been taught and believed in I just was missing this verse. I did not understand what rightly dividing the word of truth was. I was asleep. Let's turn to Ephesians. Tangle left. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, notice what Paul writes in verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Awake thou that sleepest. I've been thinking a lot about that this week. You know, I, I, I think there's a, you, you've, if you've been brought up in the church, you've most definitely heard some type of preacher, teacher talk about you know, if, if you're not awake and alive in Christ, you're just, you're just sleepwalking through life. You're kind of going through the motions. And I can think about all of my life up until 2012 going through those motions. You know, and I've, ha I've had a lot of religious experience, okay? I've, I, I've been in the church where you sit, you kneel, you stand, you do some sign, and, and you just you just kind of like a you're just sleepwalking. You're just going through the motions. Or you, I've been in churches where there's a set order of things, and don't get me wrong, there's good things for order. But if you don't understand the mechanics or why you're doing what you're doing, you're just kind of going through the motions. And and you hear a message, you go show up Sunday, and then you just what? Then you go on through the rest of your life. You're not even thinking about Sunday. You completely forget what the message was. And there's been no change in your life. So you just kind of feel like you literally are like a walking dead person. You feel like an empty shell. You're, you're not finding passion in your life. You don't feel alive. And there's this constant feeling of there's something missing. There's something missing. And you can't put your finger on it. You're not sure what it is. There was a movie that came out in the 2000s. There was a whole entire trilogy and I don't know if you guys remember the movie, but do you remember the, the whole entire movie trilogy, The Matrix? It was this action-packed movie. Keanu Reeves was the, the main star. I love those movies. But in the very first movie, the character that Keanu Reeves plays, you see him in his life. You see him, he's a programmer, and you see him going through all emotions, and someone's presenting a piece of information to him, saying, look, follow the right rabbit. Just follow the white rabbit. And there's, there's this piece of information that you're missing. There's that something that's missing that he's not realizing. And he gets introduced to Morpheus. And Morpheus presents him this ultimatum. Look, I've got two pills right now for you. You've got the red pill. You've got the blue pill. You take the red pill. And I might be getting this wrong. You forget this conversation ever happened. You go back to your life. And everything will just continue as it once was. But if you take this blue pill, I'm going to tell you, your eyes are going to be opened up to a world that you've never seen, and you're never ever going to be able to look back. And I think that is a perfect 
depiction of what it is when you fully trust in Christ for your salvation, you believe and trust that His grace is sufficient, there's nothing that you can do to earn your salvation, you can't tithe, you can't be a good person, you can't clean your life up, you literally come to this point where you realize, all I can do is trust in the grace of God, knowing that that's going to get me to heaven, period. And then, on top of that, you come into the knowledge of the truth of God's Word, and, and I'm talking God's Word, the Scriptures, you believe it, and you understand how to rightly divine the Word of Truth, it just completely opens your eyes, and you can't ever never look at the world the same way. It's almost like you wake up. You're awake. You're aware. You can see why the world's in the state that it is. You can see why there's all this evilness, and there's this world is on fire mentality because that's what the Bible says. We live in this present evil world. It's not rainbows and butterflies. It's not, uh, I don't see peace in the world today. I don't look at the world and say, wow, there is world peace. The only peace that I find in the world today is that in the true believers of Christ Jesus. They have this peace that passes all understanding. All no it passes knowledge. That's the only peace that I see. And, you know, this fear that you see in the world today. I remember in my life, there was points in my life where I was a believer, okay? I, I believed in 2012. I knew that I was a sinner. I knew all that stuff. I believed. But, but the thing that I was afraid of, and I'm going, go with me in a time capsule, right? I'm going back to 2006, 2007. I believed God, but when it came to that book, I had absolutely zero knowledge of what this thing said. And as a matter of fact, I was scared to open it up. Were you ever scared to get into the Bible at one point? Maybe I'm talking to someone right now. You're scared to open in the Bible. And I can tell you, I completely 100% relate to those people. You know why? It's because I was afraid of what this book said that it was going to chain up my life. I was afraid that I was going to have to do all these things, keep all these commandments, and I didn't want to do it because I was too afraid because I knew that I couldn't keep them. I already failed that part up in, in my whole entire upbringing. I knew what the good and what the bad was, basic idea, and guess what I always chose to do? I chose the bad, so why would I want to open up a thing that's going to completely highlight that fact that I'm bad. See, there's this fear. Fear. Fear was what prevented me from opening up the Word. But I've got news for you. There's hope. You know, fear, people operate, you're always afraid of what you don't know. If you really think about it, everybody, the, the, if, the, if you look at fear, people are most afraid of what they don't know. There's this unknown factor to it. And let me give one more illustration before I continue. Wow, I am nowhere close to where I want to get, and i got to get flying. I used to be deathly terrified of the dark. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I, used to, I, I had that fear for all the way up until in college. I had this fear of the dark. Sounds weird? Sounds silly? I don't care. I'll be, I'll, you can laugh at it. I was afraid of it. And it wasn't until I started opening up the Bible and learning about the scriptures and what the Word of God has to say about it, there is no darkness to God. He, he can see straight through it. And when I started building up my life upon just the Bible and the scriptures, things started coming off. And, Paul, and, and Jesus talks about this in John chapter 8. Let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, notice what it says in verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. Jesus speaking to the Jews. How do I know he's saying that to the Jews in verse 31? Then Jesus said to those Jews. So we know the context here. But there is a principle here that is applicable today. In verse 32, Jesus says, And ye shall know the truth 
and the truth shall make you free. I remember Obed and I, we, we used to drive to Dixon, Tennessee when we had a study on Saturdays. And um, Obed was doing his teacher thing as he does, mentors me and challenges me. And he says, finish this sentence. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall. And I said, set. And he slapped his hand on the dashboard and he said, it's make. He said, it's make. And it, it stuck with me. You know, and there's a difference. I'm not going to go into that, but I want to go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Notice what it says in verse 7. I'm going to get moving. I'm going to start picking up the speed uh, because we're already halfway through the message and I'm only on bullet point one. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear. I talked about that darkness thing and I was afraid of it. And now I'm dealing with that same thing with my firstborn. She doesn't know it. She's sitting there. But I've sensed this fear in her that's been building up. And she's growing. She's a baby. She's learning. She's making, trying to make sense of this world. And she's starting to, I can see her growing. And I, I, I've seen fear uh, uh, come at her. And now I'm realizing, oh my gosh, as a father, I've got hair raising on the back of my neck. I'm wanting to be a protector. I know that it's my duty as a father to raise her up in the admonition of the Lord, nurturing of the Lord. And now it's my duty to teach her the Word of God so that she could be equipped with the Word of God so that she doesn't have these fears that come over her. And it's crazy because I'm looking at the world, the state of the world, and I look at television, I look at the shows that she watches, even within Disney. Look at Moana. There's all these different gods that they're worshiping in the, mo in the movie. And there's scary things in there. There's demons. And you don't think that kids are sponges? Believe me, they are. It's scary how much they can pick up. They're way smarter than you think. So we have to be, as fathers on guard, equipping our children with the Word of God so that they are going to be able to carry this torch when we pass. It's something that I'm very, very serious about. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The walk by blank. 2 Timothy chapter 5. We're on bullet point 2. There's something missing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Paul writes, It's in parentheses, for we walk by faith, not by sight. There's something missing. We walk by faith, not by sight. Let's go to first Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. Notice what it says. Paul writes in verse sixteen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein, the gospel of Christ, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by sight. No, it says by faith. There's something missing. If you don't have a King James Bible, all right, if you, if you read Romans chapter 1, 16, like I did for seven years, and the message, and the NIV, and the SV, and the NLT, and the NASB, it doesn't matter what translation, but if you read that in any other translation other, other than the King James Bible, you're going to miss two words and it's the most important two words in that verse. Amen. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's what's missing in all of the other translations. There's something missing. I'm willing to bet that if you took an observation from the world today at all of the churches and everybody that's preaching the word of God, you will probably see less than 0.000001% preaching and teaching from the King James Bible. It is so important 
I don't have time to go into the, 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 the magnitude and the importance of that right book that has the holy scriptures in it. I don't care about the title. I care about the scriptures. That is so important. That's something that's missing. Because if you don't understand that it's the gospel of Christ that's the power of God unto salvation, and you're preaching the gospel of the circumcision to people today, guess what? That's not saving people today. That's putting people back under the law. That's putting people into a works program that if you don't do this, then you're not going to get saved. If you do this, then you're not going to endure until the end. If you do this, you don't have, if you don't do it, you're not going to have eternal security. That's why people struggle with the doctrine of eternal security. It's only found in Paul's epistles. He's a preacher, a teacher, an apostle of the Gentiles. Guess what they do to that verse? There's something missing. They remove of the Gentiles out of those books. There's something missing. We walk by faith, not by sight. Guess what? Uh, you take that thing, rightly dividing the word of truth again. If you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, well, then you're naturally going to take the two Gospels, the Gospel that was committed to Peter, the Gospel that was committed to Paul, and you're going to merge them into one. And so you're going to think that you need to cast out demons, that you need to speak in tongues, that you need to baptize people because if they don't get water baptized, they're not saved. You're going to be doing all of these things over here. That ultimately, according to the Word of God, rightly dividing the Word of truth, frustrate the grace of God. And it's going to be, you're going to be walking by sight. You're going to be walking by signs. You're looking for signs. You're praying for God, give me a sign that I need to know if I need to do this or I need to do that. And if you're seeing this passion and excitement coming out, I'm talking to myself. This is what I did. This is how I live my life. And I always knew that there was something missing, and I didn't understand what it was. And that key that was missing was rightly dividing the word of truth. Understanding the Bible, how it's put together, what's being written to who, and whom is speaking whom, all that, the what, who, what, whom, who is speaking, what's being said, whom are they speaking to. And when that happened, it was like the light bulb went off, and I had complete, all the puzzle pieces fell into place, and that Bible actually made sense. Well, that's crazy. This common sense, biblical approach of you need to understand how to study your Bible. God gave you the key. He only told you in one verse how to study it. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Guess what's missing all the other translations? Rightly dividing the word of truth. And people like to uh, put people in this category and, and I don't proclaim to be King James only. I don't take that stand. I believe people can read whatever Bible you want. But I'm going to straight up tell you, if you want 100% the truth and nothing but the truth, you're going to have to get this. Because I will tell you this much, and this is why it's so, that's one of the toughest things for people to see, is because they build emotional attachments to their Bibles. That's what I did. I had, I had an emotional attachment to my NIV Bible. This is the thing that I built my life upon. I built my life upon that book. I just didn't realize that it was corrupt. It was a corrupt word of God. Let's keep moving. See, uh, last thing I'll just say before I go on to the next piece is so many people today are living by what they experience and what they see rather than faith and trust in the Word of God. People are not walking by faith today. They are walking by what they see and what they experience, and especially their spiritual experiences. And trust me, this guy's got hundreds of them. But I've learned to not put my trust in those experiences and what I saw and what I felt, but rather I've learned to put my trust in the Word of God, what it says, and rightly dividing it. Amen. Now, this next phrase, everybody needs a blank. Let's turn to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. 
Uh, notice in verse 30 and 31, context, there's the Ethiopian. He's coming to Jerusalem to worship. Uh, and he's reading out of Isaiah, out of the Old Testament scriptures, the prophet Isaiah. And in verse 30, And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he, the Ethiopian, said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come and sit with them. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a lamb. Uh, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shears. So he opened his mouth. And later on, you're going to see that Philip preached that this man was Jesus. So I, I, I've seen this happen so much lately. And I over the course of five, six, past seven years. But you ever see someone that says, I don't need a man. I've got the Holy Ghost and I've got the scriptures and I'm good. I'm going to tell you right now, I think that is probably one of the most prideful, arrogant things that I've seen people say today. And it's unbiblical. We need guides. We need teachers. We need preachers. And I'm going to illustrate this in the Word of God. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Notice what Paul writes in verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I'm going to tell you what. You're not saved today by anything else other than someone in your life preached the gospel to you and you believed it. Period. That's... That's, the, the, that's how God is operating today. He's working through preachers. He's working through teachers. That, and this is why it's so important that we have faithful men of God rise up to preach the Word and teach the Word. That's why I'm so pumped about Ty sitting here in this room right now. He has been such a blessing to me and an encouragement because I've been afraid that I've been afraid for my generation and those after us. Because the days are only getting darker. The days are only getting more evil. More and more... False preachers and teachers are rising up, teaching things that people want to hear, their itching ears, and sound doctrine is so hard to find, there's something missing. Sound doctrine is so hard to find nowadays. Why is that? Well, if you read the scriptures, we're living in perilous times. People having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What are they denying? They're denying the power of the gospel, of salvation, that Christ dying for your sins, being buried and resurrected from the dead, and just believing and trusting in it, that's not enough. And I'm telling you, you got to beware of that. Beware of that. We need preachers and teachers. We need patterns. Let's go to 1 uh, Timothy. Hang on right. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 16, verse 15, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Paul was the chief of sinners. He says in verse 16, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul was the first person to be saved into the body of Christ. That's what that verse means right there. In me first. He's the pattern. He was the apostle of the Gentiles, the chosen vessel to preach the word of God to the nation of Israel, kings, and the Gentiles. And when you get to the end of Acts 28, 28, salvation has been sent to the Gentiles. And from Paul, Paul taught Timothy. He taught Titus. And then Timothy and Titus, they went and taught men. And then here we are 2,000 years out. And the reason why the ministry is still going is because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God is working through faithful men, teaching faithful men. That's the pattern. 
We're not here today because one of us got struck by lightning and God spoke in a vision to us and we've got this revelation. No, we're here today because the Word of God stands forever. It's not passing. It is the only sound, solid, firm foundation thing that you can build your life upon. Everything else is meaningless. Your finances are going to fail you. Friends and family will fail you. Fill in the blank. Where's your trust? I'm at 30 minutes and I'm not finished. We're going to keep going. I've got one last bullet point. Full proof. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to read six verses and then we'll conclude this message. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Paul, nearing the end of his ministry, this is what he told Timothy. All right. This was his charge to Timothy as he left it. And this is my charge to all of us today and those listening in online. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God, and there's something missing in these other translations, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why would you take the Lord from that title? He is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's important. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom? Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry." I want to talk what it means to make full proof of thy ministry. The first proof that you need to understand to make a full proof of of thy ministry is first, you need to know the Word of God. And I'm talking about the Scriptures in the King James Bible. You need to know the Word of God. Because if you know the Word of God, you need to know the Word of God in order to preach the Word of God and teach the Word of God. If you don't know what the Word of God is, please stop talking. You're going to cause more harm and damage than you are going to be doing better for a person on the other side of that spectrum. You need to know the Word of God. Number two, you need to understand sound doctrine. Meaning, you need to understand sound doctrine. Romans through Philemon, for us today, that's sound doctrine. In times past, Genesis Genesis all the way through mid-Acts, that's sound doctrine for the, the little flock. And that sound doctrine is going to continue. It's at a pause right now, but it's going to continue in the ages to come. But God's not dealing with an earthly people today. He's dealing with a heavenly people. And that's what the church, the body of Christ is. We have a heavenly inheritance. We have a heavenly inheritance in the heavenly places forever. Little flock, all them, they're inheriting the earth. They're inheriting the new Jerusalem. The, The Jerusalem that's above is going to be established here on the earth. That's what they're inheriting. You need to endure afflictions. When I got into this, I thought this was the most exciting thing since sliced bread, and I wanted to just tell everybody, all my friends and family, and I thought it was going to be, oh man, I'm so excited about this. That's naturally everyone's going to want to be excited to hear about this. And I had a very rude awakening when I went down that road. We're up against a world religious system. That isn't something that's new. It's been established all the way back here by Satan himself. And it's going to carry all the way through until that lake of fire. You're going to have to endure afflictions. Naturally, we ha- I'm, I don't have thick skin. I, I, I'm, I take criticism very, I mean, Lauren criticized me the other day and I like almost wanted to get in a fight with her, <laughs> you know, because I struggle with criticism. But the point I'm trying to make is I find great comfort when I read Thessalonians. I look at the persecution and afflictions that the Thessalonians went through. Guess what? That gives, it's so weird. I can have peace and comfort in afflictions. And the only way that makes sense is because I've got the peace of God. I've got the Holy Ghost dwelling inside this body of flesh. 
The last part to make foolproof, know the word in order to preach the word. Get that sound doctrine built up in you. Understand Romans through Philemon and understand the rest of the book. Endure afflictions. And then the last point is plan the work, work the plan. All right? This is something that I learned in, in project management in, in college, and I think it's applicable to this. And, and let, me, let me kind of unpack that a little bit. Let's go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. Notice what it says in verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. It is so important that you have vision, that you have direction, that you have a purpose, and that you have a plan of where you're heading. And if I haven't said it again, I will say it. I don't care if I sound like a broken record. The vision of Sound Words Bible Church is to carry out 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come, into, come unto the knowledge of the truth. And then the next piece of that is to teach faithful men. So the vision is this. we got to get people saved. How do we get people saved? By sharing the gospel of Christ. we got to get them to come unto the knowledge of the truth. How do we get them to come unto the knowledge of the truth? we got to show them 2 Timothy 2.15. And now how do you study the entire word of God and make sense of it? so that you're not confused by it. And then the next piece of it is teaching faithful men. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, and this is where we'll conclude. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Paul writing to Timothy, Thou therefore, my son, in verse 1, be strong that is in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me. From Acts chapter 9, 13 through 28, Romans through Philemon. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So the vision here at Sound Words Bible Church is saved, truth, teach. Amen. That's it. That's it. I can't break it down any more simple than that. Get saved, know the truth, teach it to other people so they can get saved, they can come into the knowledge of the truth, and they can teach other people. Last thing I have, and I'll conclude with this, is, you know, I, I think it was Steve Atwood was having a conversation with E.C. Moore when he was uh, beginning to start his ministry. And I, I believe, and I might be uh, jumbling the facts here a little bit, but it, the, the, the message was basically this. You know, I think Steve was struggling uh, to figure, like, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do this thing. And, and you know, I don't think, I, I don't know if it was like, I don't know if I can build a mega church or build the numbers. And uh, the, the conversation went like this. E.C. Moore, I think, asked Steve Atwood the question, show me in the Bible where it tells you to build a megachurch. So Steve kind of thought there for a second. There isn't one. And then, I think E.C. told him, what does 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1-5 through 5 say? We read it, we'll read it one more time, and we'll close. I charge thee there before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Doesn't matter what the times are. Preach the word. If people are coming in, great, preach the word. If people are coming out and they're not coming, preach the word. If you've got one person come in, preach the word. If nobody shows up, preach the word. Why? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. There's something missing. The thing that's missing is the word of God. Go figure. Maybe it's the Word of God that's been missing in your entire life up until this point. You might be singing songs, you might be listening to a preacher or teacher, but you're not opening up this book. Maybe that's what's missing. Maybe you've been opening up the book and you're actually in the Scriptures, but the thing that's missing is you do not understand that the only way to study the book is by rightly dividing the Word of Truth. So that might be the thing that's missing. Maybe you're missing a teacher or a mentor in your life. So that might be the thing that's missing. So you might need to find a faithful man that's mark and mark them as an example. That's biblical. Read a Philippians. 
We're supposed to mark examples, people that have marked Paul as their pattern, so that we can be the emulation of Paul as that pattern, so that people can see us and say, oh, I see it. It makes sense. It's sound. It's not off. When you see that, there's no question of, oh, that's off. No, there's, there's, a, there's an alignment. It makes sense. Maybe it's the gospel that's missing. Maybe you didn't understand what the gospel is. And we'll close with this. First, first, uh, first Corinthians 15. Maybe this is the thing that's missing in your life. Maybe, no one, maybe you've been brought up in the church your entire life. You've labeled yourself as a Christian. But you've always wondered, I don't know if I'm saved. I, I don't know. Wait, what, 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 have you believed the gospel? Well, what's the gospel? There's only one place in the Bible where it declares the gospel for you. It's in 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to read it for you right now. Verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received and wherein you stand, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. For I delivered first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Christ died for your sins? Amen. Do you believe that God raised Him from the dead? Amen. Do you believe that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross at Calvary, shedding His innocent blood, is enough to satisfy God to make you righteous in His eyes. Amen. When did you trust in that? Have you trusted in that? Literally, like you think about putting money in a trust. Have you put your basket of salvation and trusting that Christ's sacrifice is enough? When did you do that? If you've trusted, I've got great news for you. We'll read Ephesians 1, 13. Ephesians 1, 13. In whom, that's Christ, ye also trusted. After ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. What we just read, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. In whom, that's Christ. Also, after that ye believed... Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. The moment you trusted in Christ, and if you just trusted in Christ right now, you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That's what the Bible says. And we're not doing this by a sight thing. We're doing this by a faith thing. You just believe. You have, you have trust in the Word of God, believing it, what it says, where it says it, to whom it says it to. It's that simple. So that's something that's missing. We've addressed it. The Word of God, rightly divine the Word of truth, walking by faith, living by faith, the Gospel, teachers, God's Word. Maybe that's what's missing. Let's conclude in a word of prayer. God, we thank You so much for Your Word and the truth that are in. We thank you for the Holy Scriptures that are, make, that are able to make us wise unto salvation. We thank you for everyone that's here and everyone tuning in line. And if those that are on the fence, Lord, struggling with this, we pray for them. You'd help their unbelief and uh, that they put their trust in you for their salvation by grace through faith alone, your faith. We pray this all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Thank you for tuning in line. Have a wonderful week.